kinds of glory. And as far as I'm concerned, that glory is what I can achieve by my own strength. For example, I can choose to become a businessman and leave church who want to show to a pastor that I too can ride the GMC. Amen. Then I do also, also, also. Even though uh, Salami they say it's not also. Praise God. I also, 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 also. I bank. They say, ah, pastor too has arrived. Hallelujah. I'm now a big boy. Then I have glory. Then I say, oh, go to me today. Amen. That's my ambition. How does that implement the one that God has? Hello? The mystery of the New Testament is that while you are pursuing your natural activities in life, you are also pursuing this good. Are you with me? Because God did not take you out of the earth where you gave your life to Jesus. He kept you here. It is the midst of this wickedness. Remember the parable of the kingdom. When he was going to get for himself a kingdom, he gave talents to five of his servants. And what did he tell them? He said, occupy till I come. Now, when he was going, his um, subjects sent message ahead that we don't like this man. I will not want you to be uh, king over us. God told you that the subjects were hostile to their master. Yet, they all had to occupy in the midst of hostile um, relationships. They had to see trade. They still had to find a way of representing their master and make profit. Are you with me? Yet, one said, this man is always is a problem. He's, he wants to reap where he did not sow. He didn't make friends with these people and he wants me to go and be trading with them. I will keep his talent and he threw it under the cap, uh, whatever. Until the master can say, take care of something I did not trade. You know the rest of the story. So the idea is that in spite of the fact that you are living in the wicked generation, you must still excel. How you go about it? Paul said, now walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. I won't be able to tell you how to go about that yourself. It's, you just have to be careful with the kind of choices you make. This afternoon I was going through, I came across an article and found out that there are certain careers, about 15 careers identified in America where the divorce rates are very high. If you enter that career path, chances are that you end up divorced. Because you are not going to have time for your family. It's going to expose you to all kinds of things. And you are not going to be able to keep it home. One of it is military. Especially if you are a frontline military officer. They, what did they post you to, for me to Akure? They have not landed in Akure. They carry you, they throw you to Manduguri. They carry you to go to Guru. Before you know it, you have no family. And especially police officer. They will have wife here. Yeah? <laughs> children. They have, everywhere in Nigeria, they have wives and children. Is that home? No, they are sorry, so you can't come and say, Pastor, I want to be a police officer. I can't bless you. Because I know the risk you are going to be taking. How will you cope when they say go to roadblock? And go and mount road check, checkpoint. Praise God. Bro? And you guys are like, uh, back. Bro Daniel. Don't bro Daniel me. Um. <laughs> You shot that brother, then they will go to heaven. <laughs> so there are certain careers. If you want to keep you, now, I'm not saying that they will not make it to. I believe that in the police force, since the day of Adam, the number of people in police that have ever done police that will go to heaven, God has their number. Praise God. He already knows them. They have a quota. It's not for a policeman to get to heaven, it's rare. It's going to be very rare. Amen. I'm not saying that other careers don't have their temptations. So. There's no career. There's nothing any human endeavor that doesn't have its own challenges. But some are much more prone to corruption than others. I hope you understand. So, my dear, you have to balance it out. You have to pursue this one while you are doing that other one. But you cannot pursue one at detriment of the other. Are you with me? Certain, there are times, I, I read of a story 
of a of a brother who got a good job, very very good paying job um, in the in one city in America, and he came to tell the pastor, "We are going to be leaving. I have this job and everything." And he was a very very vibrant brother in church. His family was very blessed to the church. And the pastor called, called him back and said, "This city you are going to, do you think you will find a church that your children can grow without any crisis?" Do you think you will have time to serve God? I mean, by the time he laid out all those things to me, the guy found out that he's not going to survive. He goes to that town. He gave up that opportunity to stay there. He, will, you, will, you that, will you say he has no ambition? Yes, he had ambition, but he had to weigh it. Because that was the same problem that uh, brother Lot, the naughty brother Lot, the brother Lot, he re- he said he saw a land that was ah, he said this I will be this is my breakthrough. And it cost him his family, it cost him a lot. So those are all those things are there as examples to bonus. Am I okay? God will help us.